Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. Welcome to worship in the expanded community of First Presbyterian Church San Anselmo. We are so glad you're here. We say expanded community knowing that we are gathered not only in this room, but also with our siblings in Christ who are joining us online. So we hope that as you experience this worship together, you know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, wherever you are, there's a place for you here. What a beautiful spring day we are having here in San Anselmo. We hope that it is the same wherever you are. As we move through the season of spring, we're also moving through the season of Easter. And you've probably heard me say this a bunch of times, but Easter's not just one day. It's the whole season, the 50 days that flow out after Easter all the way to Pentecost. So for the next few weeks, uh, the scriptures that we're going to be turning to are scriptures from the book of Acts, from the beginning of the book of Acts. They're, they're uh, glimpses of the early followers of Jesus at, in the days just after resurrection, just after they're filled with the Holy Spirit, as they're trying to figure out the way of resurrection. So that's what we're going to think about for the next four or five weeks, the way of resurrection. And that's actually what they begin to call themselves and what they were known as, the way. That's the first name that Christianity had. Actually, before anybody ever thought of calling it Christianity, before there was a religion, before there were church buildings, there was the way. It was a movement. I love to think of that, the way it suggests a path. It suggests that it was dynamic and changing, and it suggests that there was a direction leading us towards where the risen Christ would have us go with all the experiences that the risen Christ would have us have. Friends, we are celebrating the season of Easter and we are venturing out together on the way of resurrection. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship God and I'm going to invite Joy to lead us in the call to worship from our online space. As we gather in the body of Christ, Please join me in the call to worship. Loving, risen Christ, into the shadows of our isolation, you speak words of life and love and community. Challenger of our lives, you call us from places we call home to lead us more deeply into the world you love. With your gentle healing touch, you redeem the broken places of our lives and you heal the wounded places of the earth. Inspire our worship here this day so that we may share liberation in your word and be filled to overflowing to share your healing love throughout the earth. Come, let us worship God. Come, let's worship God and let's rise in body or in spirit as we sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 238, Thine is the Glory. Thank you.
please join me in prayer as we confess our need for God. Loving God, even in this season of resurrection, so full of life, we come carrying our needs and the deep need of the world. All our hurt, all our brokenness, all our wandering, all the people and the places in the world that are not free. Stretch out your hand, O oh God, heal our hurt, mend the harm we have done in the world, the harm we have done to the world. Set your creation free, bring signs and wonders and life in the lives we live by the power of the risen Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me as we affirm God's abounding grace. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, every day is a brand new day. The past no longer determines who we are. In Christ, we are a new creation, a fresh new word for this day and the next, all of us, in Jesus, forgiven, loved, and free. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And reminded and assured of that grace, this is the part of our worship where we exchange signs of Christ's peace with each other. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll put the camera on the in-person congregation so that we can wave peace to those who are worshiping with us online. And if you're online, in just a moment, Mary Catherine will make it so that you can unmute your microphones and share words of peace there, just as we do that here in this room. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Well, good morning, everybody. It certainly is a beautiful day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Peace, everyone. Yeah. Peace over how to live. Oh, is that media? Yeah. I have to make me check here. He probably almost could do a summer session. Carol, how are you this morning? I'm doing fine, thank you. Okay, what's your weather like in Florida? Huh? It's kind of gloomy kind of today. Uh, sorry. But it's warm. So yeah. it's all, the ro all the roses are blooming here. Mm. Yeah. What is everybody else's garden doing? Blooming, blooming, growing. We're blessed by all these green hills. Everywhere I look out the window is just green because the hills are all green now. Yeah, Scott sent a picture of the goats. Oh, yeah, the goats are eating our grass so nicely, yeah. protecting our home uh, from fire. Yeah. It's a little fun thing, a little ritual of spring here in Terra Linda. It's a good one. I think they said have on pajamas, you know, like those baby goats in pajamas you can see on the, <laughs> hey, online. You I wanted to say that Michelle has been diagnosed with breast cancer. So that is an area of prayer for all of you, please, is that we could continue to pray for her. It's DCIS, so it should be okay, but uh, we'll do all of that in the next year, coming up with that. That's my area of prayer. And our daughter Emma's getting married. The time in worship where we were led by our children, uh, by Everett and Anders, June, Cece, Paula, Sheha, Shehu, Shira, Phoebe, Quentin, Hannah, Olivia, Elle, Ashley, whether you're a child or a child at heart, whether you're here with us in this room or worshiping with us at home, there is a place for you here. And Gina, can I slide in so I'm kind of in the middle so people can see my laptop? Excellent. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing? 
Well, this morning, I want to share something that I saw that was amazing. Because sometimes we just need to, when we experience something amazing, we need to share it with each other. And you know, it's, um, it's a part of God's creation. You know, God created the sun and the moon and the stars and all of that. And so recently, I saw an eclipse. Really? Yeah. Did you all hear about the eclipse? Yeah. Did you get to see a little bit of it? No. no. Well, so I'm going to show you some pictures. So don't worry. Don't worry. I saw the um, you saw the eclipse? So out in California, you could see a little bit of it, but there was a, a, a path up the center of the country where you could see a full solar eclipse. So you remember an eclipse, you know, we go around the sun. So we're traveling around the sun and the moon is traveling around us. And sometimes the moon gets in the sun's path and blocks it out. And if we're in the path, and if we put on some very, very special glasses, sunglasses, you can see that. So I just happened to be in that little strip because I had gone to Louisville, Kentucky, which is in pretty much kind of in the middle of the country. And then I went to spend some time on retreat in Indiana. Nice. So, you know, in the center of the country. And so this, I, was, I just happened to be there, but people traveled from all over. So you see this? Okay. So people came, you know, came in RVs, recreational vehicles. They were spending the night. They'd come from all over the country to see this eclipse. They even set up tables so they could have big meals. And there I am in those glasses. <laughs> Very fashionable, special glasses. Because, you know, when you're looking at an eclipse, you're looking at the sun. And that's dangerous. You never want to do that because it could hurt your eyes. But if you, and you want to wear sunscreen, give me a high five on that. You want to wear sunscreen. But if you're looking at the eclipse um, with these special glasses, you can see the moon moving in front of the sun. But you only do that with these special Wait, glasses. Is that the playhouse? No, that's not the playhouse. It kind of looks like the playhouse. See, I was, at, I was at a place that's called a monastery where monks live, and that's the guest house right behind me. So that's where I stayed. Ooh. It does look like the playhouse, doesn't it? Just around the corner. Okay, so this is some of the people. We're all there. We're waiting for the eclipse, and you know, it may have started there. Some people, I didn't catch it, but some people laid down in the grass. Eventually, I laid down in the grass because it's just easier when you're sitting there for two hours looking up at the sun to do that. And, and again, I had my protect, just like that, I had my very special protective sunglasses on. Okay, I did wear sunscreen. My doctor tells me to do that all the time. And so we're sitting there, and gradually, 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 the moon comes in front of the thing. And then all of a sudden, it was dark. It was dark like that. It was that. like that. So let me see if I can go back. So that's what it's like at 1.45 in the afternoon. And then at 2 o'clock, that's what it was like. So it was pretty spooky. And so then, when it was a total eclipse, only then for four minutes could I get a picture and it's not the best picture, but it gives you some idea. That's what it looked like. So, you know, that's, you know, that's the moon, and that's the sun. And even if I was looking through my glasses, the moon was totally covering up. But that tells me the sun is so big that even the moon can't stop it, can't stop it for shining its light. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you because it was amazing but also something else is amazing to me, that the God who created all this, who created things as big as the sun and the moon, created us too. And the God who loves the sun and the moon loves us too. And that's pretty amazing. So to celebrate that, let's, let's say the pretzel prayer. Let's, let's, let's say a prayer that's about God's love for us and let's lead the congregation in that. Are you ready for that? Okay, let me put my laptop up. And is there somebody who would like to lead us this morning? Anybody? Because guess what? We've got your own microphone to do that. Who wants their own microphone to lead us? I thought that would get, huh? Not to keep. Ah. See, Rob, will you lead us? And you got to hold it right up there. Okay, ready, everybody? God, I love you. God, I love you. Help me to love others. Help me to love others. As you love me. As you love me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shira.
When we were doing worship practice, Carl said, I said, are the slides in there for the children's moment? He said, yeah, they look like they're pictures from your trip. So, so, yeah, they were, they were. Um, so friends, we're, we're traveling through the season of Easter. We're talking about the way of resurrection. And uh, Reverend Paul Gaffney was here with you a couple weeks ago, and he already gave you one of those glimpses. I don't know if you remember, but it's this glimpse of the early, the, well, of the way, of the early Christian community, and they're gathered together, and they're praying together, they're eating together, they're sharing everything they have. They're selling their property so that those in need have enough. It's a beautiful glimpse. And in in that passage and another passage just like it, it also says that there were many signs and wonders. In this way of resurrection, there were many signs of wonders. And the scripture this morning, which Joy's going to read in two parts, is one of those stories. It's the story of a time when Peter and John healed someone who could not walk from birth. So it's a healing story, but it's Peter and John who do the healing. And it's a long story. It's the whole of Acts 3 and most of Acts 4. So we're going to read the beginning and the end. We're going to read the beginning, the actual healing story. And then there's a great courtroom drama. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you about that in the sermon. And then at the end, they pray a prayer of of thanksgiving and wonder to God. So we're going to listen first to the story of the healing, the choir will sing and then we'll listen to the prayer and then I'll tell you the rest of the story after that. So as you listen to the story, listen for you where you might be seeing and hearing glimpses of the way of resurrection. Joy. Our scripture reading this morning begins with Acts 3 verses 1 through 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who could not walk from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave, him, gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the hand, by the right hand, Peter helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him.
after Peter and John heal the man who could not walk, they are arrested by the authorities. When the authorities ask in whose name they have done this, Peter replies, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you killed. Because the crowds are there along with the man they had healed, the authorities can do nothing and they let Peter and John go. Our scripture reading picks back up in Acts chapter four, verse 23. Upon their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign God, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father, David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against God and against God's anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, God, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Loving God, in Jesus Christ, your word has become flesh and dwells in the midst of us full of grace and truth. By the power of your spirit dwelling and abiding deep within us, open our hearts so that we can experience your word and be transformed in this moment to go out into the world and bless the world you love so very much. Amen. We are well into the season of Easter, and it's been a few weeks since Holy Week. Do you remember? On Good Friday, everything felt like it was ending. And then Easter morning dawned full of resurrection and life, and it was as if everything was beginning again, and it was. In the Gospel of John, the writer could barely keep it on the page. The good news just pours forth. The resurrected Christ appears to Mary and then to the disciples. And then just when you think the Gospel is wrapping up, it keeps on going. The Gospel of John ends with this wonderful exclamation. And these are just some of the things that Jesus did. If they were all written down, the whole world would not have room enough to hold all the books that could be written. I love that. The writer of the Gospel of Luke, well, they go on and write one of those books, a second book, the book of Acts. The Gospel of Luke is the first of two books. The book of Acts is its sequel. Where the Gospel of Luke leaves off, the book of Acts picks up. In the Gospel, we hear what Jesus says and does, and then in the book of Acts, we hear what the followers, what Jesus' followers say and do. His disciples, the apostles, so many more of his followers, more and more every day. We see how they figure out what it is to live life without the bodily presence of Jesus after resurrection. How they figure out what it is to live together as the still living, still loving body of Christ. They set out and discover what it is to live the way of resurrection in their flesh and bones. And there's not a dull moment. 
The risen Christ is with them for 40 days teaching, and then he ascends to heaven, and then the Spirit descends at Pentecost. There's a mighty wind that shakes the house, and tongues as of fire descend. And Peter ex- explains, this is what the prophet said, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your elders will see visions, your youth will dream dreams, and so they do. Filled with the Spirit, they go out into the world, and they preach, and they teach, and they heal, and they are thrown in jail again and again. Two weeks ago, Paul Gaffney preached a glimpse of what their life in community was like, eating together, praying together, selling what they had so that those in need had enough. The book of Acts gives us story after story in those days, those first days of resurrection filled with the Spirit, how the way of resurrection unfolds in the lives they live. In this morning's scripture, we read the beginning and the end of one of those first stories. Acts 2 and 3 tell the story of that time when Peter and John healed the man who could not walk, and then they went to jail. We read the beginning and the end, the healing, and the prayer they pray as they take it all in, and here's the rest of the story. It's those first days after resurrection, after Pentecost. The followers of of Jesus have been filled with the Holy Spirit and they're proclaiming the resurrected Christ and they are living into day by day this way of resurrection. One day, John and Peter are on the road walking to the temple and they come upon a man who is begging but cannot walk. Every morning he has to be carried to the temple gate so that he can beg for food. As Peter and John approach, the man calls out and asks, for them, asks them for money. Peter goes over to the man and says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. And Peter, Peter reaches out his hand to the man As the man leaps up, the man's feet and ankles grow strong. He stands up. He begins to walk. And as he begins to walk, he begins to jump. And he goes with Peter and John walking and jumping to the temple. Well, if preaching Jesus raised from the dead wasn't trouble enough, publicly healing the marginalized in the name of Jesus, that gets the attention of the authorities who arrest Peter and John, and then they question him. They put them in jail, and the next morning, the authorities, and it is every authority you can imagine, the priests, the teachers of the law, the Sadducees, all of them, they bring Peter and John before them, before the Sanhedrin, and they ask this question, by what power did you do this? In whose name did you do this? And Peter answers, If we are being called to account for doing a kindness to a man who has never been able to walk, and if you are asking us how he was healed, then hear this. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom the authorities crucified, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands. Well, that leaves the authorities speechless. So they go and huddle up. You might say they go into executive session. The people in power are perplexed. What are we going to do? We can't deny this. This is a sign and a wonder. And the man is standing and walking and jumping right here. So they decide that all they can do, all they can do is that they're just going to go back out. And they're going to instruct Peter and John to stop. Just stop, stop preaching and healing in the name of Jesus. And so they go out and they tell Peter and John that, okay, here's the thing. Just don't do this anymore. No more preaching resurrection. No more healing in the name of Jesus. And here is what Peter and John say to that. No. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard and those powers. They can't do a thing. The man is standing right there walking and jumping. Checkmate. So they let John and Peter go. 
And Peter and John go back to their community and tell them what has happened, or maybe the community has seen it, the healing, the jail, the witness, and then they all pray. They pray together. They praise God, creator of all things, giver of life. They pray that God will watch over them from those threats of the authorities. They pray that God will give them boldness of speech to proclaim resurrection, and as they pray, they say these words, stretch out your hand to heal and to perform miraculous signs and wonders in the name of your servant Jesus. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Stretch out your hand. So here's the question. Whose hand? Stretch out your hand. Whose hand? Well, they're praying, so in the first instance, they must mean, God, stretch out your hand, O God, to heal and perform wonders in the name of Jesus. Stretch out your hand, O God, your hand that has molded and shaped us, that created us and everything that is, that created the beautiful diversity of us all in the image of you. Stretch out your hand, O God, your hand that stretched out and parted the water so that your people could walk to freedom on dry ground. Your hand that led the people up out of slavery in Egypt and through the wilderness for 40 years. Your hand that brought water from the rock and manna in the morning. Stretch out your hand, O God, your hand that reached out when we were in exile and gathered us up and brought us back home. Stretch out your hand, O God, to heal and perform wonders in the name of Jesus. And maybe as they prayed those words and heard those words, they thought, wait, wait, we've seen that somewhere. We've seen that recently, the healing and the signs of wonders. We have seen that in Jesus the Christ. Stretch out your hand, O Christ, to heal and perform wonders in your holy name. Stretch out your hand, O Christ, your hand that reached down and grabbed a handful of dirt and made a paste of mud and spread it on eyes that could not see, and those eyes saw at first dimly, but then clear and bright. Stretch out your hand, O Christ, your hand that stretched out and summoned Lazarus up out of that tomb. Stretch out your hand, O Christ, to heal and perform wonders in your name. And maybe, as they remembered that, they remembered that Jesus wasn't the only one who had stretched out his hand. Maybe they remembered the woman, the woman who came to Jesus in a crowd. Remember her? She had been bleeding for years, and she came to Jesus in the crowd, and she stretched out her hand, and she grabbed the hem of his garment, and she experienced the healing power of Christ. Stretch out your hand, brave woman, and claim the healing that is yours. Maybe they remembered those friends. Do you remember them? Those friends who carried their friend to Jesus on a mat because he could not walk But the crowds were too big, so they went up on the roof and they cut a hole in it and they lowered their friend down to Jesus and he experienced the healing power of Christ. Stretch out your hand, faithful friends, and help your friend to a place of healing. Maybe you have experienced something like that. Maybe you have stretched out your hand. Maybe you've stretched out your hand to help a child who's fallen and skinned her knee. Maybe you've brushed the hair from her face and wiped away her tears and said, you know, everything's going to be okay. Maybe you've stretched out your hand and fed someone who was hungry or taken a meal to someone recovering from surgery. Maybe you have stretched out your hand in protest. Or maybe, maybe someone has stretched out their hand to you. Maybe someone has stretched out their hand to you when, when you have fallen, they have helped you up. Maybe someone has stretched out their hand to welcome you in when you felt lost or alone or that somehow you didn't belong. Maybe someone has stretched out their hand to you when you were hurting the most and held your hand just because of love. Maybe you've experienced something like that. After Peter and John are arrested and then released, 
because the authorities have nothing they can say in the face of this healing and these signs and wonders, nothing they can say in the face of this loving, tender mercy. They let them go and the community gathers together and they pray. And they pray for something they already have. They pray for something they have just seen, something they have just experienced. They pray for the power of bold speech and for signs and wonders, for those signs and wonders to keep on going. They've just seen Peter and John confound the powers. They've just seen signs and wonders and healing in the touch of their own hands. As Peter stretches out his hand and as the man who hasn't been able to walk stretches out his, they pray for healing and signs and wonders already coming to life in their outstretched hands in the name of the risen Christ. They stand there in those first days of resurrection filled with the Spirit and all they have seen and heard and they pray these words, stretch out your hand to heal and perform wonders in the name of Jesus. We stand here in our time and that prayer lifts up for us the question, where will we stretch out our hands to heal and to perform signs and wonders in the name of Jesus? In a world where there is so much to do, feeding the hungry, sheltering those who are on the move and have no home, binding up the brokenhearted with the touch of tender mercy, working for peace and for the freedom of neighbors on the other side of the world who are huddled in Rafa, dreading the threat of the next violent assault. In this time, in this place, in our world, where will we stretch out our hands to heal and perform wonders in the name of Jesus? They stood there in those first days of resurrection, and we stand here now with the same prayer. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform wonders in the name of Jesus. Stretch out your hand. Whose hand? Your hand. My hand. These hands, these hands that are full of healing, and wonder. This is the way of resurrection. Stretch out your hand to heal and to perform signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. And as we stand here together with those siblings Uh, following the way of resurrection back then. As we stand here together, uh, we continue our prayer. We continue our prayer in song and then in silence and then in words that will lead into the prayer that Jesus taught. Friends, let us be in prayer together.
Loving God, from the beginning you have stretched out your hand and created all that is. The stars, the sun, the moon, the earth, and all creatures who dwell here. You have shaped us and you weave us together for life lived in just and loving community. We are the work of your hands and we give you thanks and praise. You accompany all you have made in love and to all our broken places you bring your healing power. And so we pray healing for all the world's hurt. We pray healing for the planet, healing for the damage we have done to the earth. Help us stretch out our hand and change our wasting ways. Help us find healing, sustaining ways that might ease the harm of climate unraveling. We pray for peace around the world and particularly in Gaza and Palestine for peace with justice. We pray for the people of Rafah, over a million of whom are already refugees. Protect them from further attack and harm. We pray for the restoration of access to all that is needed for human life, water, food, medical care, freedom. We pray for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, for a peace that comes with new systems that honor the dignity of all people. We pray for the dismantling of our own systems and structures that harm, and particularly for the dismantling of entrenched systems of American racism. Where we are complicit in those systems, stop us. Prevent us from doing more harm. Help us listen to those harmed the most and to follow them in reshaping a world where all can live free and thrive. In all the hurts of the world, by the power of your spirit, place your healing touch in our hands so that together we might bring food to the hungry, shelter to those who are unhoused, comfort to those who mourn, companionship to those who are lonely, healing to those who are ailing in body or spirit. Stretch out your hand and these hands to bring healing signs and wonders in the name of the risen Christ. Joining hands with all your people in every time and place, we join our voices with theirs, praying the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who Again, welcome. We are glad you're here. Um, If it is your first time visiting with us or one of your first times, a very special welcome to you. If you're here in person with us in the sanctuary, I hope we'll get the chance to say hello and get to know each other a little better. I'll be at the the door uh, right after worship. And then we also have coffee over in Duncan Hall. So if you want to come over and have coffee and snacks, we can, uh, we can have a little time of conversation. And if you're online, we'd love to get to know you as well. You can just leave your email address in the chat or you can email me at scottclark at togetherweserve.org. That's scottclark at togetherweserve.org and we'd love, love to be in touch. Um, we are moving through the season of Easter We are living into the fullness of life, and part of the the fullness of our life that we share together is that we've we've experienced some deep loss in the past days. So just a reminder um, that we will have memorial services where we'll celebrate the life of Sandy Truex on Saturday, May 4th at 10 a.m., and then on May 23rd, we'll gather again uh, also at 10 a.m. to celebrate the life of Patricia Swenson. Um, so we invite you to come and be a part of that as we surround the family with love, as we grieve, as we give thanks for these amazing people who have been and are a part of us, and as we lean together into the sure hope that we have of resurrection. We live the fullness of our life, and Martha Olson Joyce is going to come and share part of that. Martha, you come on up. Um, as, as we mentioned in the congregational meeting, uh, the Finance and Resources Committee uh, had talked, and there was the idea that they would come and report more frequently, 
more regularly to just describe the life of stewardship of our community. So Martha is kicking this off. So Martha, welcome. Hello. I'm here on behalf of the annual giving team. I'm gonna report on Q1 giving. At our congregational meeting in January, we let you know that in 2024, for the first time anyone can remember, our projected expenses will exceed our projected income. That's because giving declines as our membership declines. This is a trend that we are all aware of. Congregational giving has a big impact. It represents more than two thirds of our income. So when giving declines, that's a big deal and something has to change. So one thing, one change we made to fill that gap, in other words, to balance our budget, is a prudent draw on our reserves of about 25K, 25,000. And this practice may be our new normal. Now remember, a budget is just a plan. If giving exceeds our projections or expenses are less than we expected, we won't need to draw on our reserves or we won't need to draw as much. While we do have a million dollars in reserves, each time we draw on them, we are borrowing just a bit from our future. That's why we are going to be speaking to you on a quarterly basis, just to keep everybody informed as to where we are. We want to be open and transparent because we're all in this together. So to begin, our total giving budget for this year is $380,000. And here's where we are as of the first quarter. Here's the good news. In terms of giving for the quarter, we're on target. We received 20% of our giving goal and we are 25% through the year, yay. The not so good news is that pledges are down. We receive fewer and fewer pledges each year. If we were to receive 100% of our pledges this year by December 31st, we'd still be short of our goal, which means a greater part of our operating income this year will rely on plate giving or new givers or the bounty of a bequest or a major gift that we don't yet know about. It's just a bit more uncertainty. So a word about pledging. We know people give faithfully without pledging and this church doesn't pressure people to pledge that because it just doesn't feel like us. However, a pledge does give us more confidence in planning. So thank you for pledging. All right, looking ahead. We're looking more closely, the annual giving team, about how we might expand our base of financial support. As we all know, it's just unsustainable for the financial support of this church to fall on fewer and fewer shoulders. There may be ways to grow our use income. There may be ways to involve the broader community in our purpose and place. Maybe if your loved one is burying it in the memorial garden or you're attending a concert or an exercise class, it might be good to know that the place you're enjoying is, um, is reliant on the financial giving of its members. It's kind of like a KQED message. Will you rely on others to pay for the programming you love and offer them an uh, opportunity to chip in? You might also be thinking, how can we grow our membership? We do advertise and we have a presence on social media, but I always say to that question, how do we grow? The most effective way is to invite a friend to church or make a friend to church. So we're planning a Sunday seminar to talk in more detail about how our church finances work. For those of you who might want to understand more how some of these giving trends and spending plans impact our purpose and mission. And if any of these ideas excite you, please come see me after church or let me know if you have any questions. Your Q1 statements have been mailed, so please look for those and let Sarah in the office know if you see any inaccuracies. I'll see you again in July with a Q2 update. I will say this before I finish, each of us on the annual giving team continue to be amazed and grateful for the deep generosity of the people who support this church financially and otherwise. Thank you so much. Thank you, Martha. And, and I'll just underscore that word of thanks. My experience since I've been here as your pastor is that this is a remarkably generous congregation. I'm so grateful for the finance and resources team uh, for starting this, this conversation. If you look back, I was thinking at that early church, 
Part of living the life is talking about resources and talking about how we use them for all the good that God wants to do in the world. So I'm going to do the thing I do every Sunday, and I'm going to go through the announcements of all the things that are going on here. Keep in mind that each one of these things is uh, supported by our life together here. Um, The other thing I want to mention is, I think I've said this before, but if you're here on a weekday, this place is just humming with activity. This is a place where we gather as a worshiping and serving community, but the preschool, you hear the sounds of the children, you see the Cedars Adult Daycare Center, there's a theater group. Um, This is a place full of life and vitality. So there are plenty of opportunities for us to be together this week. We have several support groups and prayer groups, Um, our transition support group on Wednesday, our prayer and connection group and centering prayer groups that meet on Thursday, exercise group, book group, and then a special opportunity that's coming up in June. We're having another theater outing that Maureen Kalbas is helping to coordinate. I understand that the tickets are going fast for this, but this will be an opportunity for a group of us to go and see um, the book club, which is a place. So if you want to get those tickets, uh, get with Maureen pretty soon. And she's going to be at coffee hour with with availability on that. And she's going to come and tell us a little bit more about the play next Sunday. We also have numerous opportunities to serve. Um, We have our anti-racism team. Uh, Barbara and I and Lindsay were doing some work with our neighbors in Marin Marin City uh, this week uh, to try and get some support for some projects there. We've got the community fridge where you can come and bring food that that you have, that you, can, that you can give, and people who need that food will come and take it home with them uh, to nourish their families. Um, and you can support the many organizations that, that we're involved with, uh, including particularly the Israel-Palestine Mission Network, which if you have questions about that, uh, talk to Dave about that. On May 5th, we're going to have a postcard writing campaign, and that's in, uh, make sure I get this right, Barbara, it's for Environmental Voter Project, is that correct? So we'll be doing some Get Out the Vote campaign to help, help the environment. All of those activities, all the ways we pray together and serve together, um, we also gather our resources, as Martha has so wonderfully and beautifully explained, and we'll do that in just a moment. Remember that in addition to your, your pledges and your offerings, you also have two opportunities to give to help those in need. You can designate a portion of your offering for the Deacons Fund that will go to help individuals who are experiencing particular financial need. Um, or you can, and or you can give to the sensibility offering, which is a cooperative effort of all the churches in our presbytery to help out with, with hunger needs in, in this area. <sighs> Take a deep breath. With all those things going on, all that vitality, all of our shared life, as we take up our offering, we also use this time to pause and to engage in an intentional practice of gratitude. So as we're about to receive the morning offering, I invite you to take a deep breath and to think of one thing or two things for which you are grateful today. And let's just say a prayer of thanks. We'll now receive the morning offering.
Friends, let's rise in body or spirit and continue the music as we sing hymn number 246, Christ is Alive. So go now and by the power of the Holy Spirit alive in you and in the risen Christ, stretch out your hand to heal and to bring about signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. And friends, as we go, know that we go Christ above us, Christ below us, Christ behind us, Christ before us, Christ beside us and all around us, Christ within us. Go in peace. Amen.